Hi, everybody. Welcome to Small Steps, Big Life. My name is Nathan Aswell. I'm in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Actually, I'm a little south of Vancouver. I'm in a municipality called, called White Rock. And tonight is another local show. Tonight, I'm speaking with three people from North Vancouver, which is oh, about an hour north of me. And uh, they're going to talk about a fascinating um, show uh, called Friday Night Live, and I'm really excited to talk to them about it. So let's introduce everybody. In one of your screens is Shona and Len Grinke, and in another one of your screens is Sophia Ducey. I know about Friday Night Live from Sophia, who's been a pal of mine for quite some time now. She's a, she's a holy person. She's a minister. That's how, that's how oh, I know her. Yeah, no pressure there. <clears throat> that's how I know her. About a month ago, she let me know about FNL and asked me if I would like to come and be one of the artists that uh, takes part in it. And I thought, wow, that would be lovely. And I looked at the website and I said, wow, we should really do a show about this. So here we are. So, Shauna and Lynn, it sounds to me like you guys are pretty much ground central on this whole idea. Tell us about Friday Night Live and how it came to be. Mm. Well, Friday Night Live is the initiative of Lynn Valley United Church. And uh, just over five years ago, Lynn Valley United thought about a way of um, uh, doing church differently in a way that was really um, was, was honest and authentic. Uh, that would uh, appeal to a audience that was not the audience that was showing up at worship on Sundays. And so the uh, the group that was involved with it at that time was not Len and I. Uh, we were not part of Lynn Valley United at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the group that was involved had a list of criteria that they were looking to achieve. Mm -hmm. And it was a, an authentic experience, uh, something that was uh, spiritually uh, was real and uh, and accessible, uh, something that really used the space of the uh, Lynn Valley United Church sanctuary in a way that was um, uh, that was that was fun and visual. Uh, and uh, so that was the original vision that they had. Mm -hmm. And what they looked at was um, the, the art form of, of improv and specifically the art form of musical improv. And uh, uh, Blair Odney, our minister, uh, he reached out to the local community and said, who's the best uh, person doing improv in um, in the lower mainland or in British Columbia or in Canada at this time, and the name that came forward on a number of uh, occasions was Al Marriott, who ended up becoming our artistic director for the for the project. So a team of people from Lynn Valley United went to the uh, improv center down on Gravel Island to see Alan uh, do his work there with uh, his improv troupe. And uh, we're really wowed by the experience. And the specific reason why they were really wowed by the experience is the notion of this metaphor of improv. Improv at its best lives completely in the moment. It mm -hmm. is an art form where you have to be present to what is, mm -hmm. not hoping for something that isn't. And, uh, and so great improv really pays attention to that space that is between uh, the artists that are interpreting the experience in the moment. And, uh, and then the musical improv turns it into an absolute high wire act of being present and responding mm -hmm. to um, the other folks that are, that are with you. And so the Lynn Valley United folks at the time thought that this was a pretty compelling way to, uh, to look at ministry uh, and to look at that metaphor of improv as a metaphor for how do we live our lives authentically, um, saying yes to what is as opposed to uh, wringing our hands about what isn't. And uh, often at Lynn Valley uh, United, we talk about the notion of uh, life is lived not in a past remembered or a future imagined, it's lived now and it's lived in the present. So this whole notion of improv has really um, uh, been the foundational work of Friday Night Live. 
and uh, then it's evolved since then. So that was the, the, the roots of it, where it started from and the folks that, um, that started it. And that was how long ago? Was that five years ago? That was uh, just about six years ago um, mm -hmm. that they started to do the research into it. And then we've been, we're in our fifth year actually running it uh, mm -hmm. at uh, a variety of venues now around uh, North Vancouver. Oh. And uh, it has absolutely evolved from um, our audience reach, uh, the actual experience itself, um, the uh, the guests that we have involved with um, with Friday Night Live, and uh, our sponsorship and our outreach into the community is all um, has grown um, enormously. Uh, the way that we uh, that we go to market, the way that we communicate around it, has um, has certainly evolved significantly over the five years that we've been um, doing the work. And uh, I'd like to go through all that. The, the show, the reason for the name of my show is I, I'm a firm believer that all things that happen in life happen in small chunks. If we try to take anything bigger than small steps, we get overwhelmed. So this is a delightful story. And I know there were a lot of small steps that it has taken to get to where it is today. And so mm -hmm. that's what I want to kind of do is unravel that for people to hear what the process was. So when did the two of you get involved? Were you in on the ground floor when it began? Mm, pretty much, pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, when it first started, our son was uh, uh, part of Ad Libretto, still is, and he's the piano player for it. And it, it, when it first started, when we got started getting involved, it was being run very sporadically, maybe once a month, maybe it goes three weeks, and maybe a week, then another month. So it wasn't wasn't consistent, wasn't really drawing uh, people into into the community of, of FNL. Mm -hmm. um, so we got involved uh, uh, almost as much as an effort to, to make uh, – to, 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 to help make our son successful at it as much as to make the church successful at it. And it uh, became a, a project of ours that uh, has been quite fulfilling up until because of that. Yeah. Now, I have a now, question. Have a question. This, this may sound a little funny at this point, but this did not replace Sunday services. This, 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 that's not the point of it. It's not the point of it, no. Yeah. no it's um, uh, We have Sunday services. Friday Night Live is kind of another portal. Right. Of, of offering uh, a community within our community. Cool. And now, Sophia, when did you get involved in this? So I came to be part of Lynn Valley United two years ago. Mm -hmm. Am I getting feedback on my voice? Nope, you sound fine. No, nope. okay. I'm just getting it on my side. Um, and so two years ago, I came on board and started showing up just for the ones that were youth focused because I'm the minister for children, youth and family. And what I saw in what it was doing to be community with this multi-generational experience that was authentic and real and meaningful, it felt like the best place for me to be spending my Friday nights and my activity was supporting this in being a community experience for people of all ages. Uh, you could probably turn down your volume and that will make it easier okay. for you to speak. I'm sure it must be very confusing to hear everything you're saying coming back at you. There we go. So, okay, so, so take me back to, uh, to when you guys got involved, Sean and Lynn. Uh, so, you know, as you were saying, your uh, what's your what's your son's name? I don't know your son's name yet. Matt. Yeah. And Matt. how Matt Matt's the piano player in the show. Sophia had mentioned that to me. How old was Matt when the show began, or when he got involved? Yeah, Matt, when the show began, was eighteen, uh -huh. and uh, so he had been involved with uh, with ad libretto and musical improv from the time he was about sixteen. And so he, uh, this really is his thing, and it is certainly what he what he does. And so, yeah, as parents of uh, performing artists, yeah, when our son's got a gig, I mean, we come to his his gig, and uh, so he his other gig, his regular gig, is he's also the piano player on Sunday mornings at Lynn Valley United as well. And uh, so it's a completely uh, different experience, of course. Uh, he is uh, both classically trained in piano as well as um, as improv piano, as well as he's just finishing a program of uh, jazz uh, studies at Capilano University. And so he uses all of that in all of his different um, uh, 
piano playing experiences. Uh, and uh, actually Blair and Sophia described the way that Matt plays as being very pastoral. He really uh, reacts and responds to the people that he is in uh, relationship with. And I'm certain that that work of him uh, being an improvisational piano player has uh, certainly helped him uh, as he accompanies the congregation on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And uh, that work of accompanying the congregation on Sundays has helped him, I think, be a better improvisational piano player as well. Mm -hmm. Because it's important to note that all of his uh, work that he does in Friday Night Live is all improv piano playing. So it's not that um, if you watch things like Whose Line Is It Anyway, where the musicians will play um, the set songs and then the improvisers will sing along to the set musical tunes. That's not what happens at Friday Night Live. Right. Everything that Matt does on the piano is improvised. Right. It is songs that have never been written musically before, never sung lyrically before, and uh, and never to be done again. And it really is that notion of being in the moment, and which is uh, certainly Matt's great gift as a as a performing artist, as a piano player, as an improviser. So Matt is also creating lyrics on the spot. Yeah, he, he's creating the music on the spot, so he's actually composing the songs on the spot. Yeah, there's three actors on stage, or three improvisational singers on stage that are creating the lyrics okay. uh, based upon what Matt is playing, and Matt okay. is playing based upon what they're saying. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's um, the four, well, there's actually six in total, but the the four of them, when they're performing, so there's usually only four performing, um, work this as a as a team that uh, and it's it's very clear they've been working together for a long time because they, they do know where each other's going and and what they're what they're doing and, and are able to follow each other and, and and work with each other to create uh some very interesting uh stuff to the point where afterwards we get people kind of think was that recorded can i get a recording of that so it's uh, very interesting to to listen to and uh, to see it actually happen mm -hmm. yeah. so that was my next question so we, we and nathan, we nathan Mason, you as a musician will totally get this. It's like what happens as Matt begins like a particular tune and starts to play it, the singers start to create words that fit in with that genre and then vice versa. And so it's like taking the idea of a session player to this extraordinary level because music is being created on the spot. It is magical to watch. I can totally wait. I'm really yeah. looking forward to seeing it. And experiencing it. Yeah. So, Shauna, um, um, Lynn was just saying that there are six people total. So it's Matt and yeah. So there's so for each um, for each Friday Night Live, there is uh, there's uh, Matt is the piano player, and then Alan Marriott, who is our artistic director. Oh, so he's and he'll have okay. two or three other improvisers with him that evening. Mm -hmm. And so Ad Libretto is a troupe of Alan and uh, four or five other people that rotate in. Okay. And so every Friday night, um, there will be there could be different improvisers. Okay. And so um, sometimes it's Alan and uh, and uh, two of his female improvisers or a guy and another girl. Um, uh, and then they'll just rotate through. So yes. I was, that was one of my questions. So Alan is still involved. He's been in since the beginning yeah. and is still around. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, so Alan was involved at the beginning and he continues to be involved today. And uh, I mean, certainly the, the number of interesting success stories that we've had through Friday Night Live, um, Alan is certainly is certainly one of those folks. When he was originally uh, approached to do this, uh, this improv thing at this church, uh, I mean, he really thought that if he walked into a church, he would be hit by a bolt of lightning and burst into flames. <laughs> And uh, and a number of his um, of his of his troop members as well um, didn't get this at all. Right. And uh, but um, it's so interesting to watch now. Alan describe himself as being in ministry uh, with Lynn Valley United as we do this work uh, in community, uh, making um, making uh, storytelling of community of the notion of uh, engagement, um, uh, interconnectedness, uh, as being really the stories that we tell in community. It's really interesting to watch his um, his spiritual development. And he'll tell the story exactly in that way as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that this has really been a transformational experience for him, uh, his, uh, his improvisers, 
and uh, and they absolutely say this is their favorite uh, their favorite gig. That's their favorite thing to do because they feel so welcomed. Uh, they feel like they're able to do work uh, that is a whole different level of depth and sincerity and authenticity than they do in a like in a regular improv gig, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, Len, uh, my next question is, uh, who determines what the content will be or what the theme of the content will be? Are questions from us for the audience, or how does that work? Uh, yeah, a lot of it is, is comes from questions from the audience. Uh, quite often, definitely looking for, for some particular theme, uh, often dependent upon what's happening in other portals uh, within, within the church. Um, and they will go into the audience at the very beginning and stories based around whatever theme that they're looking for. And then the improv will generally come out of those, those stories that they tell. So, um, uh, you know, for example, somebody could say, well, they stubbed their toe today and they will create a, a song or a skit around stubbing your toe and, and <laughs> the effects of all that. It, 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 it really is uh, quite interesting to see how they can take these, these ideas that are not necessarily connected from other people, only connected by the core idea they put out, but different stories and connected into this one uh, skit or one session or one. Sometimes I'll even do a small musical theater play that, at the end of it that runs for four or five songs. Yeah. Right. So as we all know, there are five or six people on stage doing what they're doing music, musically and, and acting wise. What are the roles that the three of you play? Sophia, what's what's the part that you play in this dance? In Well, in this dance, actually, I just want to note, this is kind of one of those small step things, because early on the show was like a predetermined theme mm. that was then given to Alan to then go out okay. to the audience. And it just wasn't this authentic emergence that happened mm. in the moment. And so when Alan was given creative license to say, what's going on in your life? What themes are playing out through you on any given week? He then brings those themes to the audience mm -hmm. and the authenticity of the show just dropped to like this deeper, richer level when that kind of creative openness mm -hmm. happened over the show. So that was kind of a, a step that mm -hmm. was taken. Um, and what another step that's taken from the process of going and collecting the stories out in the audience is that we're finding that people are engaging with each other as audience members. And so they're invited by Alan to share with each other the stories on a particular theme if by chance the cast member hasn't come to them to get a story. So now we have people talking to each other about these themes as well as talking to the cast members and some of those themes then become part of the actual show that emerges and they get to see their story come to life in a whole new way. So it's kind of like, you know, you're just never too late to have a happy childhood. You know, you can like, we see an experience that may have been horrific in your life all of a sudden become this really funny, light, transformed story through music. So when did that transformation happen? When did it go from it kind of being preordained or prescripted to you know, was it Alan's decision? Was it a decision between Alan and the, the board? Or how did that come to be, Shauna? Yeah, no, that's a really interesting question. So at about, uh, so we, we played with the format for, I guess, the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Len and I were literally involved in the first couple of years by just going to watch Matt and bringing our friends out and making sure that, you know, friends and family were coming to see it and talking it up in the community and that kind of thing. And uh, in that first couple of years is when we played with um, that Blair would give the um, kind of the scripture for the for the week uh, to Alan and that Alan would be able to kind of wrestle with that and try to understand that. And that really didn't work because to Sophia's point, um, Alan wasn't at that place of his spiritual development where that connected any dots in his head for him. And so then um, we moved into kind of broader themes again, where uh, Blair would um, meet with Alan and say, you know, okay, well, let's talk about this broader theme for the week. And still that didn't quite work for, um, uh, for the, the art form and it, because it did feel more scripted, more stilted, um, the improvisers were not that comfortable with it. Um, uh, we had Alan Marriott originally 
getting the uh, the different artists uh, for us. And uh, and so since he wasn't really comfortable with what we were doing, the artists that it, that we invited in weren't really comfortable with what we were doing. Right. So it it kind of um, uh, struggled along, I guess, for the first couple of years. Right. And then um, we actually the the a group of people that were uh, the most involved with this uh, at that point. Um, uh went you know what we need we actually need to take a team approach to this because we're blair is trying this alan's trying this everybody's doing the best they can with the perspective that they bring but we actually need to professionalize this a bit so uh what we did was brought some of the skills from from business both len and i are business folks uh, you know both of us have been entrepreneurs and built businesses and um i work in uh in human resources and organizational development so we went we should do focus groups, right? We need to get some data, we need to get some research, we need to understand what's working and what's not working. And so this production team of people um, did uh, did just some focus groups on our audience and uh, people that came periodically, people that came regularly. And then we started to build out the strategy of the work based on our the feedback from people that we had um, uh, experience had experienced Friday Night Live and uh, and were giving us good perspective of what's working and what's not working. We also chatted with the improvisers and uh, got their feedback on what was working for them, wasn't what wasn't working for them. So the next season, so going into our third season, we absolutely upped the production values on a number of uh, levels. Len is the light and sound guy and totally upgraded the, the light and sound um, experience. Uh, we upped the hospitality. We um, really um, invited um, Alan to step into his uh, experience of being uh, a human being on a on a spiritual journey or a spiritual mm-hmm. being on a human journey and how that um, the, how that was for him to authentically just lead into into that so the way that we did that was actually Blair met with all of the improvisers and just to help them be really clear on what we were doing here, why we were doing this work, and inviting them to bring their full um, humanity into into doing this. Mm -hmm. And then also at that point, um, uh, I guess it was me, uh, I took over um, getting artists, getting guest artists, uh, because I I was really clear on the vision of of the project from uh, both the feedback of our, um, of, we called it our congregation, our Friday Night Live congregation, the people mm-hmm. that uh, are in that experience with us. We were clear on what it was giving back to them and how it was influencing them in their lives. Uh, we were clear on what we wanted it to be as a portal of um, of entry into the mission of Lynn Valley United. And so I took the responsibility of uh, connecting with the artists to make sure that they really knew what we were doing and why we were doing it so that they were really set up for success so that they could lean into their own um, uh, truth uh, and and bring that artistically uh, to the experience. Uh, also at that point, we started to invite um, community businesses into the experience through sponsoring it. Uh, and so it was a fascinating experience back, uh, you know, a few years ago, walking into a bank and saying, hey, we're Lynn Valley United Church and we're running this thing on Friday nights and we wonder if you'd like to sponsor us. And uh, so businesses that never thought that they'd be writing a check to a church for doing church work, um, were doing exactly that. And so, um, so fully um, a third of our revenue comes from uh, sponsorship of businesses in the community. Uh, so that that also was a pretty remarkable um, experience to uh, as we as we noticed as we made a product to the uh, more relevant and authentic uh, people in the community really started to respond to that hmm. and um, and you know so then from there the learnings have been how do we go to uh, how do we go to market in a way that uses um, social media in a relevant way? How do, um, we have people blogging about uh, Friday Night Live? We've been picked up by a variety of different um, online um, 
uh, uh, sites that have recognized us as being, you know, the best uh, best experience for families in the greater Vancouver area, um, really accessible for all ages. Those types of things have been just huge accolades that we've gotten as we've uh, continued on this journey. And, uh, and it truly is a journey. What we learned at every step of the way uh, has been has just been fascinating and uh, and transformational and life giving for sure. Fantastic, uh, Len. Thank you very much for that, Chana. Um, Len, tell me more about your uh, uh, involvement specifically. I looked at uh, I think it was uh, Sophia sent me a link of one of the recent performances. It was a jazz quartet, I think, a woman playing. Uh, and and play, uh, singing and playing saxophone and accompanied by a trio, I think. And so I assume that what we see in that picture is the sanctuary. Yeah, that would be Sandra that, May. That would be Sandra May playing, uh, mm -hmm. saxophone singer. Yeah, yeah, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous artist. Yeah. Uh, but, um, the, yeah, if you want to, yeah, sanctuary, I guess, is probably the, the, the best way to, to, to put it. We, we create that sanctuary um every friday it's mm -hmm. actually a community room that's attached to the public library wow. and um so five o'clock we roll up take our stuff out of the trailer Five thirty, we start setting up and by six thirty, we are ready for our sound check so we, okay. we start from an empty room and put in a a full sound system uh that can uh, basically can we can sound up anything you want to put in there Right. And um, a light system that's 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 growing. We started out uh, actually started out in the original building in the original church with just the house lights. Right. And um, uh, through um, a little bit of uh, borrowing, begging, and uh, donating, and the, the odd purchase here, and then we built up quite a sophisticated uh, light system mm -hmm. uh, with, um, with with a very nice light board and a very uh, high end um, sound system mm -hmm. as well. Which, um, is constantly in, in, in growth because every now and again we'll come across a situation where, oh, I need to do this and modify it, change it. And what's been uh, interesting is the, um, you know, when I started doing the, the, the sound, I was um, not particularly well educated at it. And through the, through the years I've been growing, but the number of people that are willing to, to step forward and help, mm -hmm. right? They want to see this thing be successful in the community. Uh, professional sound engineers that have come forward and said, oh, maybe you should try this. Oh, I can loan you some microphones. Oh, we can do this for you. Mm -hmm. uh, presentation House North Vancouver who said, mm -hmm. oh, what you guys need is a light board. We just happen to have one that we're not using anymore. Here you go. Wow. All, right. um, all these people that are just coming out of the woodwork to, to, to want to see this be successful. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's been really fascinating. And, and sure, we come in and we do it. We put it together. That's the mechanics of it. I think the deeper part is the spirituality around mm -hmm. seeing it come together, seeing the people come, and and sometimes you know you set up and it's just a regular crew, and so and it's it's almost disappointing when it's just the, <laughs> the regular crew. Because you go like, where's everybody come to help set up? Usually we got this whole crowd. You know, we even have um, one of the local um, merchants, uh, Boston Pizza, who gives us pizza for us while we're setting up, and and then sends more for for people to come to the show just because he wants to see this thing keep going. Uh, it's it's pretty incredible. Um, uh, just it's, it's so so. What's my involvement? I think my involvement is um, you know, just just being there to, to make sure it coordinates and comes together um, as as a technical person for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So the progression that uh, um, has been going from the actual church itself to this place, which is in the Lynn Valley. Uh, uh, what is it called? Lynn Valley Square. I've I've performed outside there in the summer, so I know that. Yeah, it's uh, you call Lynn Valley Square. Some people call it the Village Small. Some people call it the <laughs> center. Um, uh, the building we're in is called the Community Center. Um, <coughs> Excuse community me. Room. We call it the Glass Cube. You've been outside of it. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's a glass cube. It's like glass on the roof. Right. Glass right. On four sides. Right. So, right. Um, it, it it really is. But uh, it's a community room. Um, we actually wound up in that place. Um, when we were searching for uh, new things moving from the church, we originally wanted a place farther down the road hmm. uh, called Cardinal Hall, which is a which was a bigger space and has better sound qualities to it, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, we couldn't get that. We wound up in the cube, and it was kind of like, oh, man, we're in the cube. It's so small. We're not gonna do it. 
I think ultimately it was the better choice of the two mm -hmm. because of the traffic that goes through it. Mm -hmm. But um, the library there, we've got all kinds of little restaurants like sushi restaurants, Browns, a um, uh, couple of coffee places. And we've got the bus stop. And the bus stop is actually really cool because we get um, uh, the youth right. that um, otherwise used to sit outside the bus stop, smoke. Even one night when we were first there, um, a couple of kids were smoking because it was raining outside. And they're smoking in the hallway. Of course, sets off the smoke alarms. Um, so now we've got them curious <laughs> enough to actually. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was quite good. them to come in. They went the, the, the fire trucks came and the firemen came and we had to clear the building and da da da. Wow. So, but um, now instead of hanging out in the hallway, they're actually peeking through the doors and coming in the windows, taking a look in to see what's going on, hmm. which is, um, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. So, Sophia, is is the, the, the um, on the site, it talks about this location and an alternate location, which I will actually be right. at next week. So what's that about? Is Lynn Valley's so, not available um, every week or? Yeah, at the library square, it's not available two particular Fridays a year where they're doing their book sale for the library. But just to follow up on what Len was saying, it has been extraordinary how what ended up being we were thinking wasn't the best idea has been phenomenal for the show. Mm -hmm. We've gotten all these dads that are coming out with their, you know, sons, you know, with their DVDs at, on a Friday night. And they're like, what's this? What is the show that's happening? And then they come in and check it out. And now we have this group of 11 year old boys who kind of own the show and they sit in the front row and they go back and forth and they engage with the audience. And so it's like this sweet, multi-generational, very boy centric um, mm -hmm. show. And like they then are telling people about the show. And, and we did a feedback session with them saying, why do you come and why do you tell your friends they're like, this is another home for us. We love this. Huh. And so now we're doing youth nights once a month where they get to learn how to do youth, you know, improvisational music and speaking huh. and, um, and this whole group of girls from the local elementary schools have started coming, but then they bring their parents or their grandparents. And so you're seeing this wow. community starting to birth itself just by where the show got moved because we tore our church building down and are redeveloping right now. So it's been this beautiful serendipity that has happened for us. Okay. That, that, and that was my next question is why is it happening here and not at the original church building? Because the, that is, is in metamorphosis. Yep. We, two years ago or a year and a half ago, we, we tore our church building down. It's in the process of being redeveloped and will reopen at the end of this year. So oh. And, and then the uh, other space we use is the same space that we use for our Sunday morning um, okay. ex worship experience. And so twice a year we do our Friday night live show there. Okay. So coming back to yeah, something Shauna there. said, uh, yeah. So coming back to something Shauna said earlier about, you know, kind of these focus groups, et cetera, are they ongoing? Is that something that people are invited to, to, uh, I, I don't know what the structure would be. Are they invited at the end of the show to give their opinion or to speak to someone or go online, and, you know, on Facebook or like, what, yeah, what is that process? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a number of ways that we continue to get feedback around this. So certainly as Sophia is uh, saying is that, you know, face to face in, uh, in small groups, uh, we're continuously asking for feedback. Uh, and as part of the, the, communication around Friday Night Live. Um, Len actually uh, has been instrumental in setting up a weekly emailer um, and, and to a growing um, opted in uh, email list of people that are wanting to know what's going on around Friday Night Live and they've opted into that. So we use that mechanism actually to do a basic survey monkey type of feedback um, and to find out what's working, what's not working, what would you like to change? Uh, we got feedback around ticket prices and uh, uh, that kind of thing, because when we first started out, it was actually just by donation. And uh, and people actually gave us feedback of, you know, don't do that, because if it's by donation then if people don't pay to come in, then they don't associate a value with it. And right. so the feedback uh, that we got around uh, doing tickets was a really uh, key decision um, that was made based on uh, the participation from our um, our online forum. We do have a Facebook page, absolutely. And mm -hmm. um, 
uh, people, um, you know, go and they share different things that are happening. Um, Possibly one of the most profound things that we've done in the five years um, was our 100th show celebration, which was uh, last May. And uh, this one was um, came from the production uh, group of Friday Night Live, where they said they wanted to do something so big that it scared them. And so we said, okay, for our 100th show then, we're gonna do a, a rock show. And uh, we're gonna go with a different venue. We took over a high school gym in North Vancouver, Argyle School. And mm -hmm. we um, uh, put together through various contacts um, and connection points, what we called our local legends of rock. And uh, these were guys um, that played with, uh, with Prism, with Chilliwack, with the Seeds of Time, um, the Rocket Norton Band, um, the Headpins. And these guys, they all played rock back in the, you know, in the 80s and earlier even. And what was really interesting about their story is that they had been estranged from each other from for probably 25 years. And, you know, the things that happened in rock bands that happened and falling out and relationship breakdowns and that kind of thing. And but a number of these guys had played Friday Night Live as solo artists. And, uh, and we approached them and said, what would it be like if you guys reunited? You were close, you were tight back years ago. Your music is iconic. You absolutely are local legends of rock and broader than just uh, uh, North Vancouver, certainly. And um, so we marketed this as our local legends of rock and we had well over 250 people. We, uh, we um, uh, ended up giving away a beautiful classic rock guitar um and uh signed by all the signed by all of, oh, fantastic. All of the guys wow and and the thing that was so profound was in talking with our local legends of rock um they said that the only place that they would have come together was at friday night live it would not have happened otherwise. It wow. healed wounds that were 25 years old. It reignited wow. relationships, uh, brought that closeness together. And if you if you watch around town, you'll see that the local legends of rock are now playing together. Playing. So yeah. it was absolutely, for these guys, transformational. For the people that were at that show, it was magical. And so you're asking, you know, how do we communicate on our Facebook page? This went crazy yeah. in terms of people's um, just being so wowed of that experience. And so again, the production team, we've never produced a rock show before and we <laughs> produced a rock show that was so true to the Friday Night Live vibe. So authentic to the human experience of being able to step into uh, just and risk uh, in relationships, and we find that when we do that, it's transformative. Yes. We actually got a, a review in one of the rock um, rock blogs. Uh, they they came out saw it, and um, they they said it was one of the best rock reunions they'd ever seen. <laughs> like, so it's like um, the the interesting thing about the four guys that were playing is that one time or another they had all played in prison, but they'd never all played in prison at the same time. So I couldn't really call it a prison reading because it wasn't. <laughs> so, it was quite wow. an interesting thing, yeah. So, 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 uh, so, so Peter, did, did, did it feel like, I'm wondering what it felt like after the 100th show, did it kind of feel like, letdown sounds funny, but to kind of go back to the regular format, did it kind of seem like, uh, we've sort of outgrown this now, or what do we do next, or how did how did that feel? Well, it was definitely interesting and we were worried about that too. We were going, so what do we do after this hundredth show? Like, how do we kind of go forward after that? But I mean, the great thing is that it has continued to evolve, What it's certainly the hundredth show did was re-cement for uh, the folks that are involved in it of just how powerful this, this work is. And uh, so certainly that was uh, at, at the end of, uh, of May last year that we did it. And then the show uh, season only runs till June. Then we take a break over the summer sure. holidays. Okay. And so then we started up again um, in, in the fall. So what it definitely inspired us to do was to do some more uh, feedback from uh, folks that attended to set some more goals uh, in terms of going forward. And um, it's such an interesting 
process because um, uh, unlike a you know a business goal, if you will, unlike if we were running a performing arts um, organization where the goal was to you know do a bigger rock show or do more audience bums in seats or whatever it is. This is actually using our process that we use at Lynn Valley United around adaptive change. Uh, mm -hmm. Just really using that metaphor of improv and leaning into what is and uh, and just paying attention to that. Where is spirit calling us in terms of where do we take Friday Night Live? And we actually don't know that. And we just trust mm -hmm. in uh, as we continue to be curious and continuing to just really be authentic in this experience, that we know it will go where it should go. And so will we you know, end Friday Night Live uh, at the end of June when we end this season? I don't suspect so, but uh, will it morph into something different? Will it show up differently? Um, and so continuously what we're doing is we get different artists involved, as we get even different improvisers involved, even uh, different piano players involved as Matt is being pulled into other uh, projects as his career continues to develop. Um, mm -hmm. we're, just, we're just being curious and noticing what is next for Friday Night Live? What does it turn into? What conversation will we be having in about five years from now? Um, mm -hmm. and, and we don't know, but it has been a remarkable journey to date, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so Sophia, I want to ask you. Uh, I mean, it's quite clear that this just—it's—it's it's just inspiring people in so many ways on so many different levels. The more and more people in the community are getting it, or coming, or inspired to be a part of it. From your point of view, what do you think? Uh, what are the challenges around it? What 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 can, are there concerns about it? Or do, I, I don't really know how else to frame that question. But you know, on. On, on, there's got to be another side to all this, you know, <laughs> issues that you guys all wrestle with or ponder or problems you need to solve. Growing pains, maybe that's the best I have some thoughts on that, and then I'm going to scoot back around to kind of what emerged this past fall that uh -huh. really was kind of an offshoot from that concert. But, um, you know, originally this was funded by a ProVision grant from BC Conference, who, uh, which is the regional body of the United Church of Canada, as a new and emerging ministry. And so mm -hmm. I think some of the challenges that when you're trying something new that's never been done, you're stepping into the unknown, it's mm -hmm. like allowing your own comfort level as a production team, as the people who are hosting this, to really lean into the unknown and to allow other people who are funding it or a part of the bigger congregation or the other parts of the congregations of Lynn Valley United to really get what this thing is creating in terms of an avenue for authentic community that is totally different than traditional church. And some people really embrace that and are thinking, wow, what's possible if a church can actually produce something like this as a community experience. And some people are like, this really isn't church. And so it's like finding that spaciousness to be able to hold all of that and be true to what we at Lynn Valley live into, which is, is it relevant spirituality for a broader audience than just those who would claim themselves to be within this narrow window that is church? Is it mm -hmm. radical hospitality that is open-hearted and welcoming to all and all means all? So age, gender, identity, all of that is, is important to us. And is it building community relationships? Those are the three pillars of the values of Lynn Valley United. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this experience of community, it meets and exceeds that in such incredible ways beyond what I see happening at many of the other spiritual organizations throughout the lower mainland, let alone throughout North America. Mm -hmm. You know, as you and I know, as we travel up and down, mm -hmm. sometimes there's not that sense of aliveness of the spirit on the move and, and being creative in new ways of building community. Mm -hmm.
And we know we're getting it right when like this fall, as we were beginning our fall season, we did a feedback session with the larger group and just, you know, was brainstorming what's next and all that. Mm -hmm. And then Shauna facilitated a community gathering of some of our MLAs, some of our council members, some police Mm -hmm. officers, some business leaders, just to talk about how do we do a better job of being more neighborly, being in community Mm -hmm. with each other. And one of the interesting things that came up over and over again at that session was everybody talking about Friday Night Live as if it's theirs. They're like, well, you know, our Friday Night Live. (laughs) And so they were like, you know, talking about it as if the community owned it, not Lynn Valley United. And Shauna and I looked at each other and we said, that's success. You know, when a community itself knows and feels that this is their experience, then we know that we're creating authentic community in a deep and meaningful way that all means all. Wonderful. Uh, Well, the three of you may find this funny for me to say, but uh, as, as uh, Sophia was just mentioning, I travel around a lot to a lot of different um, um, faith communities. And uh, you may be surprised to hear me say that what I'm thinking about a little bit, and I think, I think you're doing it to a much greater degree uh, with Friday night live than the place I'm about to mention but the only place that comes close to what you uh, what you have all created, co-created, is a church in Las Vegas <laughs> called Verve, V-E-R-V-E. And my connection to Verve is the uh, the leader of the band there is a singer-songwriter named Mike Rayburn, who has become a, a very um, powerful uh, professional speaker. And so uh, he's very faith-based, and so he decided to... Um, offer his musicianship uh, and talent to this particular church. And, and they bill it exactly the same way. Verve is, for, uh, Verve is church for people who don't like church, I think is their catchphrase. And so they incorporate a number of things within the service, though. It's not done on a separate uh, evening or day or whatever. But they have a very interesting space, and uh, you know they're able to do some audiovisual things, etc. But what you guys are talking about is way beyond that. So just to let you know, you're way beyond a church in Vegas. Just want to... Well, if you guys are basking that. Oh, it's so. awesome. Um, so, Lynn, what I wanted to ask is, uh, I realize that this is uh, something that's constantly evolving, and uh, I, I just think it's wonderful that you continue to get so much feedback on an ongoing basis from everyone so that it stays relevant and it grows. But all that said, is there a, um, a vision that you hold for uh, where you want this to go, where you'd like it to go, where you think it can go, or any thoughts around that? Oh, well, now that Vegas is taken, that's, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I would just like to see it to continue to, to, to grow and be part of the community. I mean, that's that's what we started it, that's what it's about, and that's what it's for. Right. Um, I look at it as community within the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and if the community still wants to keep it going, then we're going to continue to keep it going and keep it growing mm-hmm. uh, as we move forward and start moving back into our new space. Mm-hmm. Um, again, uh, um, the, 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 the production values of the show are going to shift. And I've uh, put a lot of time in with the, uh, the people that are designing and building the, the, the new space mm-hmm. to have um, proper conduits put in for sound and proper um, uh, structures in for lighting so that the, the, the space can be used and expanded maybe uh, to, to be used as more than just the, 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 the performances we put on now but maybe have more rock shows there because it'll be a bigger space with a better sound system right. and better lighting capabilities like right now I pull everything around in a trailer right. uh, at, at some point that's very limiting yeah I see that I, I see a day coming when I'm not doing that and we can produce even uh, from a technical perspective, a much better show, which mm-hmm. uh, um, I, I don't really like calling it a show. Mm. Uh, it's so much more than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's, uh, calling it a show kind of narrows the view of what people are going to see it. That's why I like to call it the uh, community. Mm-hmm. So the community. Um, but I think uh, as that community continues to grow, the production values need to grow as well. And I think that's true for, for anything that you want to put on. Yeah. Um, the, the, the ability, I mean, just because it grows, need a better sound system just so that people in the back can hear it being set up front right. if for no other reason than that. Yeah. Uh, so to continue to grow it, I, I, I see it becoming um, uh, uh, 
more professional, if you will, a little more slicker, so mm -hmm. it'll attract more people to, to come in and at least be curious around it. Right. And when they get that curiosity, they're going to come in and see that they can be part of this community. Right. And, and uh, just to be clear here, the uh, the the new location, is it the old location that is being revamped or is it a new location again? It's the uh, old location okay. that's uh, being completely, like there, there's nothing left of the old building. Right. It's um, it's 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 actually quite interesting. The, the 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 concept around even reconstructing the church and building the church was that they had this property here that was had an old building on that was falling down mm -hmm. and going like, how useful is this to the community? Right. So the whole design around what's being built um, and what's being built around and on the property has been thought out to be you know what can we build is valuable to the community and useful to the community and beneficial to the community. Even to the point where um, the, the the church is not really going to look that much like the church as, as it's going to look like a, a, a community gathering space. Right. So, yeah. Wonderful. And just to piggyback on what Len's talking about with mm -hmm. the with the vision of this, so we actually did some work with the production team around mm -hmm. this uh, this this thing around what is the vision and and from the perspective of creating the future from the future, right? Not being limited from where we are. Um, and but we're really clear on the fact that we are not a performing arts organization. We are a faith community. And so the work that we're doing here is around uh, community development and uh, and transforming people's lives. And so when we were thinking about where do we go from here, success for us will look like other people copying us and saying that I want to do that too. This seems so cool and I'm going to do that too, which we're seeing a variety of, of places where that's showing up. One, um, one example is our uh, young Corey, uh, who is an improvisational artist who um, uh, was one of our student artists when uh, for a couple of Friday Night Lives, and he is now involved with Sophia in terms of some of the youth offerings and teaching improv to youth. And he started his own uh, performing arts um, uh, company that is inspired by Friday Night Live. So we're noticing that type of work. We're noticing other churches actually stepping into some of this. And a lot of that is um, their own interest in expanding their communities. But we do know that lots of people um, from other churches have come to Friday Night Live and are noticing what it is that we're doing there and are really curious around the, the metaphor of improv in terms of being able to step into uh, real life conversations. Um, and so, uh, in terms of our vision for this, it really is forwarding the mission of, of Lynn Valley United. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want it to continue to be uh, meaningful uh, relationship building. We want it to absolutely be um, supported and embraced as a, uh, as a key portal for, uh, for Lynn Valley United. And, uh, and really we have absolutely let go of attachment of where this might go. And uh, so truly the notion, if it ends in June or it ends 10 years from now and looks completely different, uh, it will be what it will be. Uh, and uh, it has absolutely um, uh, been a remarkable journey to date. And, uh, and it really will be, where will we see this, this going? Uh, and, and we'll see. Beautiful. Um, are there, uh, I, I'm, one of the things that I want to make sure that I mention here before we're done is uh, any and all websites that we need to make people aware of. So I certainly know FNLNorthFan.com. Are there others that people, should, well, your Facebook page you mentioned? Yes, yeah, we have a Facebook page. We have a we have a Twitter uh, account, and then of course you can also find uh, out uh, more about Friday Night Live as well on LidvalleyChurch.com. As okay. well, it's also noted on our Lynn Valley Church website. Okay. Uh, the reason why I'm asking is because I, uh, for the replay of this, I want to include links to all of those pages so that people can go to all of them to find out more. Yeah. So perhaps uh, if you'd be kind enough right after the show, Shauna, to just send me all whatever links you want me to include, and then we'll yeah. include them. Um, and I, I one other question. Add, you know, as yeah. we're looking at this type of format of community building, knowing that there's different ways that people come together. Some of it's in person and through this very experiential arts, mm -hmm. but also as part of looking at how else do we build community. Um, mm -hmm. Another one of Shauna and Lynn's sons 
just launched a um, through another provision grant, Life Right question mark. And it's this great series of podcasts that engage questions mm-hmm. of importance about social justice, about dying. And so again, it's building that conversation. We have conversations that are small and engaging that create music at Friday Night Live. This is our hope is that engages another form of conversation through social media. So mm-hmm. again, everything looking at how do we continue to build meaningful relationship with people in the various ways that they engage in community. Wow. Just amazing. Uh, my uh, my uh, uh, wish, hope is it, it, I, I saw the performance of the, the woman you mentioned earlier on the uh, FNL site. Are there any you know snapshots of any of the shows that people can see online to get a taste of what the show, uh, sorry, what the community experience is about, Lynn, to uh, defer to your preferred uh, description? Is there anything that people can see online to get a taste of what the experience is like, or do they really have to come? To, uh, you know, of course they have to come. But. It's such an interesting question, and uh, we do uh, film Friday Night Live uh, periodically, and we mm-hmm. do have some uh, snippets of um, the experience on the website in okay. the uh, in the past highlights section. Okay. And the interesting thing about it, though, is that it's improv. Right. And so improv does not play well, be recorded and re-recorded. Because right. to see it created in the moment right. is magical. Right. And to see it replayed is a completely different experience. Interesting. And so, uh, and that has been one of the things that we've definitely um, tried on, struggled with, been curious around, uh, because uh, because people do say, I really, really like that song. Where can I get it? Is it recorded someplace? And it's like, it was played once and it will never happen again. And so <laughs> to, to put it up on uh, on video and replay somehow feels like uh, it's... It's kind of like the, you, know, you, know, you crack a joke and something happened and nobody gets it. And it's kind of like, it had to be there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there's definitely that. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy to have learned about this, and I'm really excited to not only to be going to see it, but to be going to participate in it myself on the 26th. It should be uh, really exciting. So I'll, I will do my best to be part of the crew, and I'll get there nice and early and help with set up, and I'll just be another ground for my role. So, um, so but pr- uh, pr- maybe the last thing we could do is just tell people, uh, remind people of the location again. Uh, and and great. I'm, I'm going to show off my T-shirt too. Oh yes, okay, please yeah, do. Show off the T-shirt, great. So we have Lynn Valley United logo. Uh-huh. Yep. We have Friday, Friday Night Live. Beautiful. Yep. And then is it showing up backwards? Yep. And yep. Then, no, it's perfect. Well, life perfect. unscripted. Life. So our tagline is life unscripted because Beautiful. it is that notion that life is yeah. not lived in a past remembered or a future imagined. It's lived now Beautiful. and in the moment. Yeah. And when we celebrate that and show up fully, that's mm-hmm. where the sweetness of life lies. Oh. Now, can okay. people order those T-shirts on the website? They can. They can. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. I will I will proudly wear one on the night. <laughs> proudly, proudly. Great. Well, wow, I can't thank the three of you enough. This is just this is just great. So I will tell people to visit primarily uh, the the primary site for the information about the show is fnlnorthvan.com. And as uh, as um, Shona just said, there will be a few other um, sites that I will include in the replay of this as well for people who want to learn more about Lynn Valley United and about uh, uh, and the Facebook group and the Twitter group, etc. I feel like we've covered all the all the bases. Is there anything that I left out? Anything that anybody wants to say that that has uh, yet to be mentioned? Yeah. So if anybody wants to uh, sign up to our regular email list to let the, uh-huh. them know what uh, special guests are coming up and what uh-huh. Friday Night Live is up to, uh, what nights uh, we're in what location, and what nights are wine light nights. They can go to the um, FNL North Van uh, website, and there's actually a place to sign up for our mailing list where um, where they can get all of that information regularly. Yeah. And if they is is that a separate web page, or will that be visible on the home? No, because it, it just scroll down. It's, it's right on the, the sidebar, and then it's an email that they get once a week. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. 
Sophia, are you going to say something? No, that was just oh, a thumbs, thumbs up, up on the wine nights. Yeah. <laughs> so we have wine nights and we have youth nights too. So yeah, we cover all bases. Nice. So, yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, I, I can't thank the three of you enough. Uh, for the last hour, I have been spending time with Shauna and Len Grinke and Sophia Ducey, three friends of mine who are in North Vancouver, and we've been speaking about Friday Night Live, a fantastic community event which has been going on for, oh, it's in its sixth year now. And uh, it will be my great pleasure to be uh, the artist that will be uh, part of the shenanigans that will go on on February 26th. So I hope to see some of you there. and. Uh, if you can't be there and are in the Vancouver area, I would like to strongly encourage you to check it out at some point when it does work for you. But make sure it's not in the summer. They are off in July and August. Right. And it uh, just sounds like the place to be on a Friday night, so I can hardly wait. And I hope that you all take advantage of that at some point as well. Thank you all so much for, uh, for sharing this. I, I feel your excitement and enthusiasm about it. It is contagious. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to experiencing it firsthand. So thank you, thank you, David. Thank you, David. My, my great yeah. pleasure. And I'll have a link, I'll have a link to the show for you within the hour. But Sean, if you could send me those links as soon right as away. possible, then I'll put them in right away. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Well, good luck to you all. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.